And From the Tribune News Network, this is News Break. I'm Krishna Bussell. Social Services Minister Frankie Campbell said yesterday his ministry plans to eliminate corporal punishment in all children's homes following recommendations from the National Child Protection Council that the practice be ceased immediately. This comes amid an ongoing police investigation into the children's emergency hostel after shocking surveillance footage at the care home went viral last month, showing numerous children being severely beaten. Four female staff members at that home have since been relieved of their duties pending the outcome of the investigation. Asked yesterday if more staff had been placed on leave, Mr. Campbell said he believed one more worker faced action but could not confirm at the time. He said, quote, I believe there may have been one more additional person, but I'm not sure of that. But I can tell you that I would have indicated in the first instance that whoever is responsible and whoever is found culpable will have to answer to some authority. Since the video's release, discussions on corporal punishment have been reignited with many calling for an end to the archaic practice in both schools and care homes. Police Commissioner Paul Roll said yesterday people should focus on sex crime allegations against fashion mogul Peter Nygaard and not claims that link him to corruption by members of the Royal Bahamas Police Force. He also said he is extremely pleased with RBPF officers despite allegations of bribery against some officers highlighted in a Canadian television program about Nygaard's alleged sex crimes. The TV program repeated many of the claims made by Nygaard's alleged victims in civil and criminal lawsuits lodged overseas, which have been previously reported by the Tribune. Commissioner Roll admitted to reporters that he had not seen the TV program. The piece by the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation program, The Fifth Estate, took a closer look at the fashion mogul's pamper parties at Lyford Key, where it claimed women and underage girls were drugged and raped. An argument after a car accident at the junction of 5th Street and Palm Tree Avenue yesterday led to a man being stabbed to death, police have said. Police received reports of the incident shortly after 6 p.m. Responding officers met a man lying on the ground unresponsive. Paramedics announced the man dead at the scene. Police were told there was a car accident at the intersection involving two vehicles. The occupants of those vehicles got into an altercation that resulted in one man being stabbed multiple times, Assistant Superintendent Audley Peters said at the scene. The suspects abandoned their car in the area and fled the scene. ASP Peters appealed to motorists to exercise courtesy on the road and follow the rules they learned in driving school when it comes to accidents. The Free National Movement has ratified 17 candidates, including some newcomers and 11 incumbents, to contest the next general election. FNM Chairman Carl Culmer told the Tribune yesterday he's been surprised by the number of prospective candidates interested in running on the party's ticket. The candidates were ratified at a special meeting on Monday night of the Free National Movement's Central Council, where applications of interest were considered. The ratification confirms that neither Brenzel Roll, Garden Hills MP, nor St. Anne's MP Brent Simonet will contest constituencies they currently represent. Meanwhile, the National General Council of the Progressive Liberal Party ratified 18 candidates for the next election. The candidates include party chairman and former Foreign Affairs Minister Fred Mitchell in Fox Hill, former Attorney General Alfred Sayers in Fort Charlotte, former State Minister for National Security Keith Bell in Carmichael, and former State Minister for Finance Michael Halkidis in St. Barnabas. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vaccine does more than prevent people from falling seriously ill. It appears to reduce transmission of the virus and offers strong protection for three months on just a single dose, researchers said today in an encouraging turn in the campaign to suppress the outbreak. The preliminary findings from Oxford University, a co-developer of the vaccine, could vindicate the British government's controversial strategy of delaying the second shot for up to 12 weeks so that more people can be quickly given a first dose. Up to now, now, the recommended time between doses has been four weeks. A dozen state police officers were being questioned today following their arrests in connection with the killings of 19 people, including Guatemalan migrants whose bodies were found shot and burned near the U.S. border late in January. Tamaulipas State Attorney General announced Tuesday night that all 12 officers were in custody and faced charges of homicide, abuse of authority, and making false statements. The killings revived memories of the gruesome 2010 massacre of 17 migrants near the town of San Fernando in the same gang ridden state. Those killings were done by a drug cartel, while the January 22nd slayings allegedly were carried out by Mexican law enforcement. 
The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A building ridge of high pressure is supporting moderate to fresh breezes across the Bahamas, while a strong Atlantic low pressure continues to propagate sea swells across the islands. Beachgoers should refrain from entering the waters due to the high risk of rip currents and dangerous surf. Motorists and pedestrians should exercise extreme caution for water intrusion, overtopping seawalls and coastal roads, especially along the Fishing Hole Road in Grand Bahama and the Glasswood window bridge in Eleuthera. For all areas, it'll be partly sunny, breezy, and mild in the northwest and central islands, and partly cloudy to cloudy and cool in the southeast Bahamas today, becoming fair and chilly over all areas tonight. Small craft's advisory is in effect due to ocean swells. Winds northwest to north at 15 to 20 knots in the northwest Bahamas, and 10 to 15 knots in the central and southeast Bahamas. Winds falling 10 knots or less over all areas tonight. Seas 3 to 5 feet near shore and up to 7 feet off offshore in moderate northeasterly swells, mainly along Atlantic-exposed shorelines. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 72 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 55. The sun will set this afternoon at 554 and will rise tomorrow morning at 651. That's Newsbreak. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper, now on the streets, or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.